Guess what I have in my little handy hand? My second vinyl collab with Auntie Tay. My first vinyl collab with Auntie Tay went over so well. You guys love those patterns. I love those patterns. It's one of the best selling vinyl collections on her website and I'm super proud of that. I am equally proud of this collection and I think you guys are absolutely going to love it. In this video, I'm going to give you a super quick and fun project to use with one of my favorite patterns from the collection. And in the next clip, I will take you through all the patterns so you can see them and how beautiful they are. Uh, I named all these patterns after things that are super close to my heart that I absolutely love. And some of you who are friends with me or close with me know what some of these names mean. All right, so of course, first, <laughs> we gotta talk about Vince, okay? Vince is a deep, moody, emerald green, upholstered, moment. Absolutely love it. When I sent over my mood board for this collection, I wanted something that was inspired by sort of my dream home decor kind of vibe. And I think her designers absolutely nailed it. So we have this beautiful moody green moment. This is OK Sass. If I could have a couch made with OK Sass, I would. I just absolutely love this. Next, we have Stand Out. So Stand Out is just a standard zebra print, but I wanted this in the collection because I wanted to have it paired and featured along with some of these patterns. So this just kind of goes with the vibe. Next is Rowdy, named after my little, my little male kitty absolutely love rowdy this is like a cream and polka dot kind of moment next we have empower love that we've got the deep moody green black blush and white which was the colorway that i really wanted for this collection this was hands down my favorite this is amora jean the little bows, you've got a beautiful creamy white with a blush bow print. Just love it. So classy, so dainty and feminine. Next is Grace. I want a wallpaper in this pattern. I just love this. You've got some floral and foliage kind of things going on. It's a little bit vintage. It's a little bit modern. It's a little bit traditional I don't know but I'm just obsessed with it and this was the first oh okay <laughs> and this one here this is Kirsten Kirsten is a tortoiseshell moment how I have longed for a tortoiseshell print in this sort of splendor and beauty that we're getting here. I'm so excited about this. I cannot wait to get this on a cup. I wanted, I okay, I've tried and failed tortoise shell techniques several times and never have really been able to nail it. So it would be really nice to just have a vinyl that I could use instead and make my life a million times easier and it's going to look so much better. So that's what I wanted with Kirsten. Now you'll notice that all of these patterns just work so beautifully together. They all mix and match so well, I think. Okay, I mean, they just all kind of fit together beautifully. Thank you to Auntie Tay and her team for putting together such a beautiful and unique collection. I am so excited for you guys to see this. I'm even more excited to see what you guys make with these. I hope you love them as much as I do. So let's go ahead and jump into the project that we're going to be making today. We will be using Amora Jean and some beautiful florals to create a fun and easy tumbler design. Let's get started. 
All right, you guys, so I'm starting with a white gloss sublimation cup from Craft Haven that I've scuffed up a bit with my sanding block and I cleaned it with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol to prep. I'm just using this because it's already white and it's gonna work perfectly for what we need. I'm using Amora Jean from the collection here and I kind of sized it to be an inch of overhang on either side of my cup, paying attention to the orientation of the pattern there so we get all those little bows straight. I'm going to peel back an inch from the side I wanna start on, which in my case, I like to start on the right-hand side. Again, we have an inch of overhang on the top and the bottom, so in case we mess up or something, we got a little bit of wiggle room, all right? I'm gonna fold back that first inch of transfer paper there. We're gonna line this up on the cup as straight as possible. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but we want it to be as perfect as possible <laughs> so these bows don't look all crooked. We're gonna cover this up with some flowers later on, so don't stress too much. I'm gonna use my felt-sided vinyl scraper to go back and forth along the vinyl, and I'm gonna use the vinyl scraper to push back that paper backing. Notice I'm not applying any kind of tension to the vinyl or the paper backing. We're just slowly swishing back and forth with that felt edge of our vinyl scraper. Once I get to the end there, I'm just going to cut off the excess with a pair of scissors. Then I'm gonna grab some half inch masking tape. You could use whatever kind of tape you want, doesn't matter. I'm gonna place this right to the side of our seam there because I wanna have about 1 16th of an inch overlap. I'm using that tape as a guide to keep my blade straight while we trim off that excess. Next, I'm gonna pull the excess at the bottom around the bottom rim as tight as I can. This is going to help reduce any wrinkles down there towards the bottom rim, and it's gonna help us get a nice smooth trim when we go around and trim the excess off. Once again, we'll use that half inch masking tape to put a line around the bottom of our cup to use as a guide to really cleanly trim the bottom edge there. Once we have the bottom all trimmed up nice and clean, we're going to pull the top excess over the rim. We wanna pull this nice and tight over that very top rim so we can get a nice clean trim. Once we've got this all pulled as tight as we can, again, this is going to help reduce the wrinkles. I'm gonna run a very sharp craft knife right along the edge here. We're gonna get a nice clean finish. Now that we've got our vinyl wrapped, I'm ready for some fun stuff. We are going to add these beautiful floral furniture rub-on decals. Let's <laughs> say that 10 times fast. Okay, these furniture, floral furniture rub-on decals. I found these on Amazon. They're absolutely gorgeous. I just love a classic floral moment. We're going to cut these out with our scissors. Make sure you keep that clear plastic sheet over it. You guys have seen me use rub-on decals on the channel before. This is no different. These are just made for furniture. I'm pretty sure they're like the same thing. And they're like a little bit expensive, but you're gonna get a good amount in the pack. And they're super easy to put on. So if time is money, um, you're saving a bunch of time with this. You can place these directly over your vinyl. So they're just gonna go right on there. We don't need to seal them. And they're super easy to apply. The only hard part about it is they're not repositionable. So once those stick down on the cup, it's there. That's where it's going, all right? So really try to uh, not hesitate. Be absolutely sure of your placement. You're just going to stick them right down on there pressing firmly to you know squeeze out any bubbles or anything and then you're going to really aggressively scrape it on there with the little wood stick that it comes with you can use a popsicle stick or even a vinyl scraper would work make sure you really press firmly to get it all on there and you can kind of see it separating from the carrier sheet once it's firmly applied to the tumbler, you should be able to pull up on the sheet without pulling away your decal. If you notice the decal pulling away with the transfer sheet, just press it back down and apply more pressure to firmly 
apply it onto the cup. I applied just a few all around in sort of random spots on the cup. If you have some areas where your decal will wrap around a curve or overlap along the top edge, you can just easily trim that with your razor blade and it'll come right off. All right, and now we're ready for our first coat of epoxy. I've got 30 milliliters mixed here and I probably won't use it all, uh, but we wanna just coat our cup nice and smooth, get everything nice and even. And then once I've got my epoxy on here, I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit of this beautiful chunky opal glitter. This is from Peachy Olive Glitters. It's called Basic White Girl. And it's just gonna add the extra little kind of sparkle and zhuzh that I felt like this design needed. This is a fast setting epoxy that I'm using today. This is Illumilite's Amazing Quick Coat. So it's going to dry for about two and a half hours or so, and I'm gonna come right back and go right over the top of that with a second coat. I'm gonna let that second coat dry for about four hours before we move on to the next step. Remember that your dry times may vary based on the epoxy brand and type that you're using. My cup should be pretty smooth now after those two coats of epoxy, so I'm ready to move on to my normal sanding routine. We're gonna sand down around the top rim. I wanna expose a fine line of stainless steel up there. This is where our final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the seal for our tumbler. We want to establish the seal on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. Once I'm done with my sanding, I'm gonna clean my cup up with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. And now I'm ready to move on to the next step. You'll notice that I didn't paint my bottom, very bottom of my cup, and it really bothers me that the bottom is this like bright white and our pattern is an off white. So we're gonna tape this off, and after I tape off the bottom rim, I'm gonna mask off the remainder of my cup with some saran wrap, and then we're gonna spray paint the bottom of that cup with some off-white. I believe this is called Antique White from Rust-Oleum, and it matches the background color of this vinyl just perfectly. And it's going to blend the edge of that vinyl into the bottom of our cup to create a more seamless look. Some of you might be wondering, why didn't you just spray paint the bottom before you apply the vinyl? And the reason I didn't do that is because you'd see all the ridges and stuff from the cup through the paint. And I just don't think that's as elegant of a look than if I were to paint it after it has a couple coats of epoxy on it. Okay, now I'm gonna take you guys through how I created the decal for this tumbler. It has that classic thin framing around it, and then we've got just some really basic title, font, quick little quote. When I did the Jingle Candy Cane tutorial last year, you guys absolutely loved the decal for that, and I'd asked you if you wanted me to do a tutorial on that, and I just kept forgetting to do the tutorial. So I'm going to include how to do that in this video now, and we're gonna go through that together. It's super simple. So we've got Cricut Design Space open. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the Shapes feature. So we're gonna click on Shapes. We're gonna select just the basic square. And then I'm going to resize that square to the size that I want it to be on my tumbler. I've already pre-measured and I decided I wanted to do 2.5 inches. From there, you're gonna to wanna to duplicate the square and make the duplicate a little bit smaller. You'll notice I have three squares in total. And we're gonna take the smaller one and put it on the inside of one of the larger ones. I'm gonna change the color so I can see it. Then we'll go to align center to get it nice and centered. We'll select both of them and then click slice. What I should be left with is just this clean outline. I'm gonna delete what I don't need. And I'm gonna pull back one of those extra 2.5 inch squares that I made earlier, and I'm gonna make it white. I'm gonna cut that with white vinyl, and I'm gonna cut the frame with gold vinyl. So we need them to be two separate images here on our canvas. Next, I'm gonna add in our text file. 
You can either put your own text in through Cricut Design Space or upload something else from a different program. I got this more self-love quote from the GoDaddy Studio app as part of their graphics collection. And I just uploaded it to Cricut Design Space on my phone. And that's what I'm gonna use for this. So now I'm just changing the color of that frame so I can get a good idea of what that looks like. You'll notice I changed the size of that more self-love to two inches. I'm gonna be cutting that out of black vinyl. So this is really quick and easy to do. It's a great way to make a very classic, clean, modern looking decal on your tumbler. And all it really is, is just playing with the shapes feature in Cricut Design Space. It's that easy. I've already got all my vinyl cut and weeded and now it's time to layer everything up. So I'm going to start with a gold frame. This is a textured gold vinyl. I will link the one I'm using here down below in the description box. And you want to peel back the paper backing instead of pulling up with the transfer tape, particularly with this type of transferred vinyl. And then I'm going to use the grid on my transfer tape to line everything up nice and straight. Once you've got it layered over the wording, you want to definitely use your ruler to make sure everything's nice and centered. I messed up and I centered the top and bottom of my words, but I didn't center side to side, but whatever, it's good enough. Once I've got that frame layered over my words, I'm going to transfer it over to the top of my white square. If you accidentally kind of messed up the alignment on that gold frame, you can just cut off any of the excess white with your scissors before you transfer it onto your cup. I'm gonna put this onto my cup using the hinge method like I normally do, but before we apply it, we're going to measure twice, so we only have to cut once. So using our excess of transfer tape to anchor our decal, we're gonna lift up on one side, cut off the backing paper, press firmly on that first right hand side, then we'll repeat that process on the left side and everything's on there nice and smooth. After our decal work, I'm finally ready for my final coats of epoxy. This particular cup took two final coats as usual to get it nice and smooth. For my final coats, I am using Alumalite's Amazing Clearcast Plus, which has an enhanced UV formula, so it's gonna keep this cup beautiful, bright, and white for a very long time. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And also let me know what your favorite print was from this new vinyl collab. Thank you so much for watching my video and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.